The transfer window has closed, and squads are locked in until January, barring some Saudi Arabia deals or something. It's not over yet, Liverpool fans. And I'm going to talk about who had the best and worst transfer windows, in my opinion. And this is going to be for the upcoming season, so I'm going to be ignoring, like, 17-year-old wonder kids that were signed. And let's start with the best teams, teams who I believe boosted their chances of success the most. Let's get into it. Aston Villa. Villa has really boosted their chances of success this year, and I believe that they'll be staying in a tier of teams that are going to be competing for Europe. Pau Torres comes in as a center back who's amazing on the ball and will really help them play in Unai Emery style. And then Diaby comes in on the wing as a really dangerous player. He's been elite in the Bundesliga for the last few years. Really good player to help their team. Then Tielemans, he's been a solid midfielder for Leicester for a long time. He did fall off a little bit last season, but I believe that was a bit of a fluke, and Leicester probably should have stayed up. Langlet can provide some depth at that center back position. He does have a lot of potential as well. Maybe he'll be able to start, but I think mostly because Mings is going to be out for the season, it's good to have another player like him in the squad. And then Zaniolo is a good option as well. Now, they did lose a lot of young players, a lot of promising players, but I think that for this season in particular, that probably won't hurt them. Maybe in the future, they'll be kicking themselves for losing a Cameron Archer, Aaron Ramsey. But I think for this season in particular, they should be okay. And I think the main thing is that they brought in some really good players on the ball, and that could help them play in Unai Emery style. Now, for some teams in the past, West Ham specifically, when you're a pretty good team that's overachieving and you try to uh, play a new style, that can really come back to bite you. But I'm going to have faith in Umay Emery. I'm having faith in Pau Torres, and I think this Aston Villa team will establish themselves on the ball and become a team that might be able to consistently compete for Europe. Newcastle. Oh, they are spending that blood money well. Tonali comes into a midfield that was already very strong and boosts it completely. A lot of energy, a lot of good crossing from the half space. Really strong player that fits great with Bruno Guimaraes and Joel Linton. Just a really good midfield that Newcastle has built. In addition, they brought in two good fullbacks, two young fullbacks in Livermento and Lewis Hall. I think they can really provide some depth. And Trippier, Dan Byrne, they're not getting any younger. They have some good options for the future now. I thought Lewis Hall was one of the big bright spots of a bad Chelsea season last year. And I think we've seen the potential that Livermento has. And then they have Harvey Barnes who comes in. He replaces the outgoing St. Maximin. And I think that's a little bit of a downgrade. I am a fan of Harvey Barnes, but St. Maximin was such an exciting player. But with Newcastle already having Isaac who can play on that left wing, Al Marone's in the squad as well. They have some really good players, so I don't think they'll miss him too much. But Harvey Barnes might not be as good of a player, but I don't think it's that big of a downgrade. And mainly with Tonali coming in, I think Newcastle really added to their squad, added the depth that they'll need to compete in the Champions League as well. I think, don't think that they'll make the Champions League again this season. They've had a pretty bad start, but a really tough schedule. But I just think that a lot of the bigger teams really underachieved last year, and they'll be back to their form. But I think Newcastle are going to continue to get better. I mean, they have all the money in the world backing them. And this is another good window for them. Nottingham Forest. Well, Nottingham Forest have done it again. They've spent a ton of money and brought in a ton of new players. And I'll be honest, last year I was very critical of this. I thought it would destroy team cohesion. But Steve Cooper was able to make it work. And I have a lot of faith in him as a manager. I'm a big fan of Steve Cooper. And I expect them to be fine again this year. I think when you look at the teams who are in a relegation battle, the quality is a lot worse than last season, and I think just the talent that they've brought into the team will really help them stay up. Again, too many players to just go over, but I'm a huge fan of Sangare. I think that he's a really solid defensive midfielder. Alenga, he showed a lot of promise with Manchester United. Callum hudson Adoy is a low-risk, high-reward signing. Matt Turner is a solid goalkeeper. Like They have a lot of good players around the team, like a ton that are really good who I'm just don't have the time to go over. And I think Nottingham Forest has spent enough that they'll definitely be able to avoid relegation and might even be able to avoid a relegation battle. I think Forest really improved their team. Now onto the big six teams. And I don't think any of them have really substantially improved. Teams have made slight improvements, but I don't think any of them have really taken that next big step forward this summer. But I think there was a clear winner in terms of a team that improved the most. That is Arsenal. Arsenal bought four players this summer, and all are pretty good, but I'm not sure if they'd spent the money the wisest. First, there was Timber, who I think was a very good signing, provides depth all across the back line, and depth was a huge need. 
when Saliba went down last season, Arsenal were just done. And it's unfortunate that Timber got injured, but I think he was a very good signing. Then there's Declan Rice, who's another good player, good defensive midfielder, and they've been finding ways to play him and Partey together. I don't know if he was the biggest need. I think Partey was already doing a pretty good job, but he is certainly a very strong player to bring into this team. Then there's David Raya, who looks to be a backup goalkeeper right now. I think that Ramsdale and him were going to compete right now. Ramsdale's still the starter. David Raya could take that spot. But again, like with Declan Rice and Partey, it's kind of just a slight upgrade in a team that had a good amount of holes elsewhere. I think a backup striker for Gabriel Jesus would have been very good. I mean, Nketiah has been doing fine, but I don't think he's a real Champions League level striker. And getting somebody to compete with Gabriel Jesus, I think, would have been a better priority. But, I mean, I'm not against them signing Rea or Declan Rice. Rice especially is a very talented player. And then there's Kai Havertz, who... I think they overspent on, to say the least. Havertz, we know he has all the talent in the world, but at this point, he's just a head case. He just isn't been able to score, and despite all the talent he has, he's not been playing great recently. I think that there's a world where he is able to rediscover his form, and it's a huge part of Arteta's Arsenal team being great, but for the amount of money that they spent on him, I'm just not sure if that's going to be worth it. And at the moment, it looks like Havertz is really bringing down this team and is a bit of a downgrade on Granit Xhaka, who I'm not the biggest fan of. So I think Arsenal did have a decent window bringing in some good players, but didn't really improve their team that much. Manchester United. Manchester United has built themselves in Eric Ten Hag's vision, and whether that's a positive or not, we'll have to see in the future, but this is definitely Ten Hag's team at this point. Onana comes in as an amazing goalkeeper at the ball at his feet, certainly an upgrade on De Gea in that department, and him in possession will really help Ten Hag play as he wants. Then he has a midfield with a lot of energy with Mason Mount and Amberback coming in. He's been a fan of Mason Mount for a while, so bringing him in is going to help Ten Hag play in the way he wants. Fajulland up top is a striker who can provide a ton of energy, good on the ball as well, and again, it's just a part of Ten Hag's team. Now, will this help out Manchester United? We'll have to see, but I think Amberbat's probably an upgrade on Fred. Alenga isn't going to be missed. De Gea, great player, but I think moving on from him was the right decision. And it's going to be interesting. They haven't had the best start to the season. We'll see if things are able to get better. But Manchester United have definitely backed Eric Ten Hag, something that they've been accused of not doing for managers in the past. And I think that's a positive, but we'll have to see if that was the right call. Liverpool. This transfer window will either go down as one of Liverpool's best ever or one of Liverpool's worst ever. I don't see it there being an in-between. It's a high-risk, high-reward window where they completely turned over their midfield. Out goes Henderson, Fabinho, Keita, Milner, Kieran Gibbs, and even Roberto Firmino. And in comes Soboslai, McAllister, Endo, and Gravenbarch. And I think that it could easily work out great. I think Soboslai is an amazing talent. I think he's the surefire guy to work out. And McAllister also looks amazing. He was a key in Argentina winning the World Cup. Great for Brighton. Brighton players haven't always had the best success outside of Brighton, but I think McAllister will be good. Gravenbarch, he is just a risk signing. He has shown talent in the past, didn't show it at all at Bayern Munich. But he could be a good player, but they didn't spend that much on him. And I think... He could be very good in the future. And then Endo, they really need a defensive midfielder, and it honestly reads a bit as a panic buy, but I do think he's a solid player, and especially with Curtis Jones coming through, who might be able to play that role more in the future, and also Trent Alexander-Arnold coming into the midfield to help alongside him, I think Endo will be fine. Now, they are losing a lot of really good players, but um, I think that they should be good enough. And again, it is pretty risky. While I do like those signings, who knows if Sobos Lyon McAllister will really be that great midfield that Liverpool need right now. And we'll have to see how it works out. Man City. Man City's a tough team to talk about because I think they're still going to win the title, but they probably got worse as a team. But at the same time, they got a good bit younger, which is good as well. I think when you look at the outgoing players, Gundogan, amazing player. Jao Cancelo showed a lot of talent. Laporte was always good when he's on the field. Mar is a really good player. They probably got a good deal for Cole Palmer. I like him, but Chelsea paid a lot for him. And then when you look at the players who come in, Gavardiol, really good center back. Might be an upgrade on Laporte, tough to say. Daku, probably a downgrade on Mars, but a lot younger. Kovacic, a decent bit younger than Gundogan, but Gundogan's getting better as he aged, and Kovacic isn't exactly young. 
So can't really say there. Mateus Nunes, very good young player coming in. Probably worse than last season, but again, they're still going to win the Premier League in my opinion, and they did get a good bit younger, so I'd lean towards this being a good window, though the team has gotten slightly worse. Tottenham. Given the circumstances, I could argue that Tottenham had a good window, but the team has gotten worse. Harry Kane left the club, their star man is gone, and with that, they're going to be struggling a lot. I do like some of the players that they brought in. James Madison and Van de Ven look like really good signings. They finally replaced Hugo Lloris, and Solomon and Johnson provide wingers that should fit Pasacoglu's system. And that is positive, but it's not really great. I think outside of James Madison, there's no players who really belong in a top four club. And it's signings that you'd expect a Aston Villa or West Ham to make. And especially with them losing Harry Kane, I'm not sure if this team is going to be good enough to make top four. Now, they have had a very good start, but once the games start getting really tough, we'll have to see how they end up doing, and I'm not too confident in Spurs this year. Chelsea. Like Nottingham Forest, Chelsea brought in a ton of players, but I'm not as high on them as I am with Nottingham Forest. I have a lot to say about Chelsea, and I'm going to be making a whole video on them soon, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with them, but I'm just going to say... They made a lot of very risky signings with young players, and I think that they've lost a lot of their surefire quality veterans, and because of that, they could have a lot of struggles if these young guys don't pan out, and Bully's record of bringing in players hasn't been great. I don't think Chelsea had a great window. And let's stick with teams who've gotten worse this year. And starting out, we got Sheffield United. I've said this before, how do you get promoted to the Premier League and get worse? You lose and die, your best player. Cam Archer comes in, he looks pretty good, but I'm not expecting a young player like him to be able to keep Sheffield United up. They also lose Sander Birch, one of their better midfielders. He did have a couple of issues with consistency, but you just needed the quality in the team. And they also lose Billy Sharp, who was a part of the culture. I don't think that any of the players they brought in will really help them stay up, and Sheffield United are likely going to get relegated. Wolves. Now, Wolves' situation isn't as bad as I thought at the beginning of the season. They don't look like a terrible team, but they have issues scoring goals, and I don't see those issues going away anytime soon. And in addition, they just lost a lot of really good players. I understand the circumstances they need to sell a lot, but losing Ruben Nevitz is going to hurt. Losing all of those players in the team, they look like they're going to be in a relegation battle. Thankfully, the league does look very bad this season at the bottom, especially compared to last season where you had Leicester get relegated. But I have a lot of concerns about Wolves. And those are my main thoughts on these teams. I think that those are the guys who've gotten a lot better, gotten a lot worse, the top six teams. And with that, I'm going to go through some squads a little bit faster now, a lot faster. And starting off, we have Crystal Palace and Fulham. I'm going to be lumping them together because I think they're about the same. They had... All right, windows, okay, but both lost to Starman, Palace losing Zaha, Fulham losing Mitrovic, and they will struggle to replace them. I think they have good enough teams that they'll be able to stay up, especially this season, but both have gotten worse by losing their star men. West Ham had a good window, spending the Declan Rice money well, but they did lose Declan Rice, and because of that, I can't really say they've gotten better, but I'm a huge fan of their signings. I've been a fan of Kudus for a long time. I think he'll be a great player for West Ham. James Ward-Prowse has been great to start off the season, and Alvarez comes in as a good replacement, or at least competition for Suchek, and I think West Ham look like they're in a very good position right now, but I can't really say they've gotten better with Rice leaving the club. Brighton is tough to talk about, because I feel like if another club had this window, I'd say they did terribly. They lost a very good goalkeeper, they lost two really strong midfielders, and they brought in a good amount of unproven players, especially at the goalkeeper position, bringing in a young keeper, and when young keepers typically don't do well in the Premier League. Then you got Jao Pedro from the Championship, who knows how good he'll be, a lot of unproven players, Fati on loan, I mean, that, I mean, he's only on loan, so it's not exactly a risk, but maybe it's a bit of a distraction. Kind of reminds me of when Stoke would bring in a bunch of former Barcelona players. So I wouldn't exactly be excited about it. But this is Brighton, and I feel like they've earned the benefit of the doubt, and I wouldn't be caught dead saying that they had a bad window with the track record of success they've had. I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea's spending $150 million for players in the, from this window in one or two seasons, and 
like again i don't think i can call it a good window because i'm not sold on a lot of these players but it's bright and they'll probably be great bournemouth and burnley i'm going to be lumping together because like crystal palace and foam i think it's kind of a similar window they spent a lot of money on some talented young players who can help make the team better but it does look like a bit of a risk especially with burnley who just got promoted I'm not sure if they brought in the Premier League experience that they really needed to help sur them survive. I mean, I'm not sure if Company's familiar with relegation battles. He's only been managing pretty good teams, at least relative to the quality in their league. So that's going to be tough for them. We're going to have to see how Bournemouth do. I'm really excited about their manager, but you know, you have to get through that beginning stages first, and it's going to be tough. Again, I've said it before, the bottom of the Premier League does look pretty bad this season. I'll get into Luton Town later. I think Sheffield United are pretty bad. Then there's Wolves, Everton, so it is a decent time to be making these risks, but we'll have to see if it ends up getting either of them relegated. I've said this before with Luton Town, they are preparing to get relegated this season. I don't think that's necessarily a bad decision, but when you look at the signs they made, I think that they're preparing to be a good championship club next year rather than a Premier League team that can survive. And again, I don't think that's a necessarily bad decision. They had a pretty big collapse in the past, and they're doing their best to make sure that doesn't happen again, but I don't think they're going to survive this season, and I can't call it a good window. Brentford made a couple of smart signings. They brought in a replacement for Rea and Flecken, who looks like a pretty good goalkeeper. Nat Collin comes in, uh, Mupai comes into the squad, and it's not really a lot to talk about, but Brentford didn't really need a lot. They've been a solid team, and I think the goalkeeper should be a good signing. They've had a good track record with the signings as well, like Brighton has. So I feel decent about them. And lastly, we have Everton, another team that really hasn't done too much, but they're a team that was in a really bad relegation battle last season, and they could have done a lot more. Like Wolves, they do have a bit of issues with being able to spend money due to their past spending, but just bringing in a lot of attackers, I'm not sure if it's the best decision for them. Beto looks solid. They've got another few options who could really help. But I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. And I think Everton are going to be one of those teams at the bottom trying to avoid relegation. And will they be able to do it? It's going to be tough. I think they'll be really competing with teams like Wolves, Burnley, maybe Bournemouth for that last relegation spot. And we'll have to see if they end up staying up. So those are my thoughts on every team in the Premier League and how I think they'll do. And I think it's going to be a good season. We've got a lot of teams really taking that step forward. Aston Villa, I'd probably include West Ham. Newcastle look like they could really be pushing for Europe. Brighton probably as well. They probably had a great window. I just don't see it yet. And then you had a lot of big clubs who I think got a decent bit better, but nobody who really took huge steps forward. And I think there could be a decent bit more parity this season. I think the race for Europe could be really fun. Then there are some teams that got worse, especially at the bottom. Wolves, they had their circumstances. Sheffield United, I, I don't know why they sold their best players. But I think it's going to be a fun season. Yeah, that's all I got to talk about. See ya.